let's start where we always start with the word authenticity. When you hear the word, what does it mean to you? Usually you can only be authentic with, with people that you're close with. It's, uh, you know, behind closed doors, it's a lot easier to, to just show up and, and, and talk the way you talk and, and dress like the way you want to dress and, you know, you know, show those colors that you want to show. I think that's what being authentic is for me, you know, just being able to, to speak, not only looking in a specific way, but being able to speak in a specific way and and not caring obviously without offending anybody right so like that's that's the main <laughs> point is like being being yeah being being yourself interesting few words that you mentioned as far as like people you're close with you said i mean is there anyone closer than the family like tell me about family growing up was it easy for you to be yourself growing up that's a very good question man because i i, I grew up in mexico being mexican in jalisco uh mm -hmm. you know Ameca jalisco shout out to my people from Ameca. But yeah, no, I, I never had a hard time, you know, being authentic where I grew up because that's all I could be, right? It's so like you are, you know, I didn't, I didn't have to, to learn a new language or I didn't have to learn a new culture or watch specific sitcoms or, <laughs> you know, do these things to be able to, to fit in. So I would just walk outside of my house and, and, and be who I was. <laughs> So, so when, did, when did you come to the States? I moved to the U.S. when I was 17. Oh, yeah. So that's so, like high school, right? That's right. Yeah. They, uh, I did like a month of my junior year and then I, I was, you know, I became a senior and I did one year of a se my senior year and then I moved on to, to community college. Yeah. Even before we get into like your experience, I'm curious, like, how do you think your family adjusted coming to the States? It took us a while, you know, uh, it's. When I, when I moved, you know, this is 2008, uh, and, you mm -hmm. know, I like to add to, you know, my, my parents, you know, they, they used to come way before me, you know, my dad, he got his green card when he was months old, you know, my, my grandmother, yes, yeah, she was an agricultural worker, so was my, my granddad, so my dad had that advantage where, you know, they were given an opportunity to give their kids green, cat, green cards, I don't know exactly how that worked, but I mean, he, I saw it, you know, like, he was, he was born in 1971, and And his green card says like 1971, I think, like, you know, <laughs> some months after I was like, okay, you know, that you were, you were lucky, dude. So my, my parents ha had that idea, you know, they understood what it was to be an immigrant and a Mexican in, in a foreign country, but they never really tried to adapt, you know, because, you know, they would come and then they just would go back. So in one of those trips I was born and, and when I was born, we just moved to Mexico and, and, and didn't, didn't come back. You know, we came for vacations and stuff. So when we moved, we had an idea of what it was to be, you know, uh, quote unquote American, you know, from the United States. If I say bluntly, you know, like the idea that we have is how to be a white person kind of, you know? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I know it was going back to your question. It, it took us a while to understand that. I mean, and I'm telling you, this is a, a while is like 10 years to understand mm -hmm. that we could be who we, who we are, you know, mm -hmm. without having to, to assimilate. And my parents are still struggling with that. You know, like, I think they grew up in a different generation, mm -hmm. uh, where <laughs> you, you had to act the part, right? Like they, mm -hmm. they, 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 sometimes it didn't feel like they could be or, or talk like Mexicans per se, you know? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that assimilation process. Like. In what ways did you see your family try to fit in? And I think it's natural. Like everyone, everyone does it. 100%, man. And moving to the U.S. at 17, most of your U.S. experience comes from what you see in media, right? Like whatever you see in the news, et cetera. For in me, movies. it was what I saw in movies. Exactly. Yeah, right? So like yeah. I, I, I like to tell this joke where, you know, growing, growing up in Mexico, my whole experience about moving to the U.S. was based in, in five movies, right? When movies to, the, to Mexico got like 10 years later. You know, it's Canal Cinco. It's where we which used to watch movies because it was like an open channel. It was free. Mm -hmm. So they had like all the kids or, or, you know, teenage movies. So we would watch like Grease, you know, The Breakfast Club, uh, Ferry Bueller's Day Off. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, later it was like High School Musical. At some point we watched Scarface, you know, Blood In, Blood Out and stuff. So it, for me, that was what it was to be in the U.S. You know, it was like, you know, varsity jackets. I was, you know, I was a soccer player. So it was like varsity jackets, cheerleaders, uh, gang members, um, you know, a lot of dancing. Do like, I, I, I'm, <laughs> a lot still of confused. I'm still confused of, you know, who came up with the dance-offs, dude. Like, you know, who, who, <laughs> who was the first dude who came out to a shootout, you know, with, the, with you know, with wearing dance moves, you know, like that, that was their, <laughs> their, uh, their weapon. I've always been curious about that, but. Yeah, so when I moved here, uh, it, it was like, I was very confused, man. Like, everything that you see in movies and everything that you see, is, it's either, it's either like white and beautiful, right? Like, it's like white and cool. Like, this is back in the day before, you know, 
movies or agencies were trying to be more inclusive. So it was like expensive high schools, lockers, sports, dancing, varsity jackets, you know, all that. And then it was either that or you were part of the lower community. You know, you were a, a brown person, a person of color, you know, an immigrant, et cetera. So in my dream, dude, like, I thought I was going to come to the U.S. and I was going to come to those one varsity jacket locker high schools, you know. But I, I you know, I arrived in a, in a high school that that didn't have, it was underrepresented, you know, underfunded. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was majority, you know, most of us were immigrants, people of color, black, you know, mm -hmm. uh, Mexicans, Asians. Um, and it was a cultural shock, you know, uh, because it, it was nothing like what I had imagined. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I think that answers the question. It's like the idea that I had. Is that, is that what you I, asked? Shit, sorry. Yeah. No, no, that, that's perfect. I'm I'm just laughing in my head because I'm imagining you like, you're like, oh, I can't wait to get in a fight. I'm going to bust out these dance room moves. No one's going <laughs> to mess with me. Dude, it, it's fucking <laughs> hilarious, man, because, you know, it was di different ways of dressing up. You know, like when in Mexico, the mm. preppy movement, it was like full full blast, right? Like you was, you know, wearing, you know, Albert Crombie or American Eagle and like, tight jeans and, and you know wide bands or you know converse so when i got to high school dude like you know to this rough high school i get there and i'm wearing like you know skinny jeans before like they were a thing and like white leather converse and a really tight orange uh i think it was some brand you know like the white letters on the chest you know you know i have like you know curly hair and i'm walking in and dude, I mean, they they dress differently, man. Like they they dress tough, you know. And I was like, oh shit, like you know. In, in my mind, I'm like, okay, who am I? Who am I gonna have to beat up to be part of this, you know? <laughs> to be part... <laughs> of, of, of course, that's a joke, you know. Like, but in Mexico, uh, there was where I grew up. Like, there was this thing. There was different hoods. They were they weren't gang members, you know. Mm -hmm. But like, if you were part of a specific neighborhood and you wanted to join another neighborhood, you had to fight someone supposedly, right? Like yeah, that was yeah. like the uh. I don't even know. Christening is, can I use that word? Or like, you like, know, like a hazing, maybe. Right, right. Like to be able to let in, okay, you got to yeah. find someone. So, like, that's what I thought I was going to have to do <laughs> in my high school. But no, it wasn't like that, dude. Like, it was just the way they look because, man, I hang out with these, with these guys still. Like, this, these are my, these are all my friends. And it, it was cool to get there because I, I don't think that if I hadn't gotten to, if I would have gone to a, you know, expensive high school, like to a rich high school. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'd be the person that I am. And I'm very grateful to, for who I became by having that experience, you know, like understanding the needs and the differences that aren't necessarily shown in media. All right. Here you are with this idea of like what the U.S. is and it's all based on the movies. Right. And you go into this high school and in almost you, you kind of get like a realer perspective on like what's really happening in the world. And it's interesting because, yeah, you mentioned like if you went to a, a private high school, you would have never got not not a real but like what the average american let's say goes through right because that private high school would have been a lot wealthier folks and that's not necessarily the average american so it does give you that perspective yeah 100 percent. when i was 16 i came to work as a dishwasher you know before i moved for good uh, mm -hmm. at 17 i mean i was born in the u.s and he asked my dad hey man look i want to make a little money is it cool if i go to the u.s you know stay with one of my ankles and just you know work for a little bit so he's like sure so i came and i worked I think it was like three or four months and it was a dishwasher, right? So like I was, I was, you know, I was trying to make money and, and, you know, it was pretty cool. Like I, I, I made money, I hang out, I learned a little bit of English. Um, but then, so the next, the second time I came, I, that, that place where I went with my uncle is called Manteca, uh, California. And the neighborhood where he lived, it was beautiful. You know, it was, you know, big green lawns, you know, they nice houses. Uh, it was cool, man. Like it's, it, it was affluent, right? So where I moved, uh, you know, in South Sacramento, didn't reflect that again that's that's that was another shock right like when i get there i'm like okay shit like this is not this is not what i thought i was gonna get for your family did they have any expectations for you as far as like hey we moved to the u.s we want you to have a certain type of life did they put any pressure on you or expectations on like what you should go into when if when it comes to what to study or what to do professionally yeah yeah i i feel anybody i mean most people that are from an immigrant family and you're going to the university I, I think you know your parents they are always thinking you should do this so you don't have to do what i did 
right? Like mm-hmm. it, there's always that you do this so you don't have to do what I did. Uh, in my case was my dad having to be in the U.S. and us being in Mexico. That was difficult for him, you know, because he couldn't be with us all the time. I mean, I see it differently now that, that I'm, that I'm, a, I'm an adult, you know, and I want to have my family on my own one day. And I understand that 100%, you know, like before I, I, I used to think, yeah, my dad is in the U S no big deal. But now I see that, you know, I needed him, you know, like it's, it's, it's normal. Um, but now him, you know, going to the university, he, he always wanted me to like, you know, do an off office job or do something where I could, you know, use my, you know, my education to not have to work with my body. Funny thing is, dude, I love working with my body. You know, like I grew up, you know, doing physical work my entire life. So now I do have an office job. I'm, I'm very lucky and very fortunate, you know, that, that, you know, I'm able to work indoors uh, from mm-hmm. home sometimes. And that's what my parents wanted. Dude. Like, it, 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 it's funny, man, because I, I should say, because if my, if my parents listen to this, like they're very supportive, you know, they never said, oh, you have to be a lawyer or a doctor or, you know, all, any or that. something. Yeah. Yeah. Never. You know, they always said, you know, you can, you can do what you, what you want to do. You know, you try, just try to be the best, right? Like I've, I don't think uh, I'm working on it. You know, like, I, I don't think I'm there yet, but there is external things that I do. So like I bartended for a long time and they, there's always pressure like, Hey dude, when are you going to stop bartending, man? Like you study, you know, you went to, you went to the university. You're like, when are you going to do that? Uh, and I can see my parents, they, they're happy for the place where I'm working. Right. And that, that's important for them. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's funny, man. Like I'm sure that you experienced this too. Like if, if I were ever to say, Hey, you know, I think I'm going to quit and I'm going to do something else. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to bartending. They would flip out, you know, like I, yeah. I think they would support me. But it would it would not be uh, it would not be funny for them at all. Uh, yeah, for me. Well, my my family was the same way. Like I never got pressure growing up to do anything. In many ways, I had to like, all right, well, you're not telling me to be an accountant, so now I have to figure out like what the hell I want to do. So it was it was good not having the pressure, but at the same time, I kind of wish someone pushed me in like some direction so that I, yeah. I could like figure it out. Because li- there's so many things you can do. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, and I same thing for me. Like, I think if I told my mom that I was going to like, well, I did quit my job. But like, if I did quit my <laughs> job and say like, I was going to go bartending, like, I think she'd be supportive. But I think like concerned is a good word. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I mean, that that's that's family. Like if I had a if I had a child, I would say the same thing. I would be Dude, concerned. You know what I mean? But supportive. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I agree. I think I had this conversation with with someone else whatever you became that's not only you who became that it's you and your family especially if you're an immigrant right because the moment you move as a parent of course you're moving to better yourself but you're also better moving to better the opportunities of that of of your children right them seeing you get to that position where they've seen you because they have dreams of you you know they 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 have their own maybe they don't share them with you but they see you doing specific things then when you get there that's an achievement for them too so it's mm-hmm. sometimes it, you know it's not on purpose or you know they, they don't do it of course in a negative way uh of you of them wanting wanting them wanting them to, for you to do something it's just that dude, it's natural uh and and i respect that you know like i mean but at the same time, and not, and not to say that I'm I'm doing this right, but like if if you are or if anybody's doing, like we shouldn't leave nobody else's dreams, you know. Even even when we came here, and and we have to be thankful for those opportunities. But at the end of the day, it's like okay, you know, I fulfilled what you wanted me. You know, I became I became a doctor. You know, now I'm gonna go and and be an artist. You know, I'm gonna go and polish some nails. Uh, whatever that is, dude, like just fucking do it, man. Like it's a uh, I think it's tough for for us, uh, for Latinos, having those conversations still with with our parents. Uh, but I think we we we've got there, dude. Yeah, and tell me, uh, tell me about like some of those early experiences that you had working, right? Whether it's bartending or whether you had an internship, because I think assimilation is different when you start working too, because now it's going to impact your income, right? And there's a little yeah. bit more pressure on like what you want to wear, how you want to show up, how you want to do your hair, all of those kind of things. How are you going to speak? How did you assimilate when you started working? Dude, that, 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 that's a great question. And I love to think about those first days, you know, I mean, because of the way I grew up, uh, that's, that's something that my, my, my parents, you know, taught me was how to work. You know, you have to be a hard worker. You have to be a hard worker. You know, they, they might be, you know, maybe you don't speak English. But you're gonna mop those fucking floors like no one else has ever done. You know what I mean? So like it, it was that idea. 
So when I was a dishwasher, that was easy, right? Uh, and also like everybody in the kitchen, you know, they, we all spoke Spanish, easy. So as I started everyone, moving, everyone had more, a uniform too. Yeah, it, it was yeah. It, it was easy, right? It's like, but as 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 I started moving into even bartending was cool. Like I have mm -hmm. to say that as a bartender, as a server, when I worked in the front of the house of restaurants, I was very very lucky, dude, because I learned how to use my accent and where I came from as a tool to get more tips. I mean, if you ever sat in one of my tables, even you tip me extra, that was all, uh, you know, it was part of the plan, right? Like you, you come in because again, you're, you're, you know, quote unquote exotic and interesting. And, you know, you come in and he's like, Hey, senoritas, what can I get for you? Uh, is there anything that you want when you, you know, like you just, you just play with that, you know, that Latin, you know, there's like this idea again in movies and in American culture, we're like, oh yeah, you know, the, the Latin guy that, you know, the spicy person and all this, you know, it's funny. Mm -hmm. So I, I took advantage of that, like full on, man. Like I, I mean, and I'm not ashamed of it at all because he was, he was fun. And I just, I did what I needed to do. Did I mean, you see, I was, did you see any difference when you did do it and when you didn't do it? As far as your tips or anything? Oh, yeah. Like 100%. Like I didn't really? do it all the time. Like only when I had, you know, when I had time, like when you're busy, you're just running around, you know, you go and serve people, be happy, smile, whatever you want, you know. But when you when you have time and, and you see, you know, there's, there's, you know, people that look like, you know, they might have, they might have some cash or, you know, like, it's just like they, they're spending more money, you know, you, you approach them and you're like, hey, que tal, como están, you know, you speak them like, get a deeper voice in there, you know what I mean, like, it's just, <laughs> dude, it, it, it worked, you know, uh, it, it was funny because there That's was this so joke uh, behind the bar, I was, you know, it was, so it was, uh, every, all of us, you know, were from different backgrounds, but I was the only one with an accent, you know, like, a, and my friends behind the bar, there were stories that we made up, like, oh, yeah, you know, have you met Roberto? He used to be a professional bullfighter in Mexico. Uh, <laughs> that dude, it was, it was really cool. Like, you know, we, or he used to be a professional dancer. He used to be a professional singer. Like, oh, dude, to this day, we just joke around and text each other. About it because it's believable, right? Like, because it's, again, this idea, this cultural idea that, uh, it, it, Latinos, like, yeah, you know, like movement and, you know, all this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I took advantage of that. But when I started moving um, into more of office job, more professional mm -hmm. settings, you know. Corporate um, type of stuff, yeah. Yeah. And interestingly enough, man, I've, for most of my career, I've been part of executive teams, right? So uh, you know, even since I was an intern. So uh, my mentor at the time, you know, she explained to me what that meant. You know, look, you're part of an executive Aww. team, the way you dress, the way you, you, you talk, the way you move, you know, everything matters because this reflects back on us. I'm like, yeah, I understand. Like he was, it was a very big deal for me. Like I started to use expensive words, you know, that <laughs> I, I mean, I, dude, I, I kid you not. Like I, I, I mean, I did this for a very long time, but especially when I started working, you know, in this, in, at, at that level, like, okay, how do I say buy? you know, more nice here, like, oh, you purchased, like, I, I did that on purpose, right? Uh, and then it's funny, dude, like, when I, when I started working in an office for the first time, I texted one of my friends, you know, they gave me a project, again, Latinos, you know, like, or uh, we're used to working quickly, uh, mm -hmm. and they gave me this project that I was supposed to finish in, like, a month or something, and I finished, I finished it quickly, right? And I texted mm -hmm. one of my friends, I'm like, hey, man, look, I have nothing to do, dude, I've been just standing around for, like, three days. And he's never worked in an office. And he said, dude, just get up, go find a mop or, you know, a broom and just broom or clean the kitchen or something. I'm like, we're not in <laughs> restaurants anymore, dude. Like, this, that's that's not, I'm like, bebe limpia, cabrón, que te vean que te estás moviendo. Dude, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand. Like, that's the way we're taught, right? Like, okay, you, you got a new job. You have to be the one that's moving, you know. Leaning time is cleaning time, all this bullshit. Uh like our family even, right? Like the advice that they give us is just dependent on their experience, right? But at some mm -hmm. point, it's a weird time when we kind of like start to get into rooms that our family has never been in, you know, or our friends have never been in. And that's yeah. that's nothing. There's, it's just different experiences. Like we, you know, th what do they say? Like the next generation is like, you know, in theory, supposed to be more fortunate than the previous generation, right? Like there, there's more technology, there's more opportunities, right? So we like, we're just fortunate enough to be in rooms, right? So I had that same thing, like, I would ask my mom for advice, and she would say things I was like, ah, that doesn't make sense, mom, like, <laughs> like, she would yeah. tell me, like, she would tell me, like, don't go to happy hour with your co workers. I was like, Mom, that's how you build relationships. Like, 
but like she was trying to convince me like no they're there to sabotage me and they just want you to get drunk to take advantage i was like no 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 you don't get it oh um, yeah and that, so that's yeah, that's like, very common yeah yeah but it's interesting too like you got some of the feedback or not feedback but just like guidance of like hey you're on an executive team be very aware of everything that you do so you <laughs> you started pulling out like a thesaurus and was like how do i <laughs> how do i what's a better word for big yeah uh, for, uh gigantic yeah dude <laughs> you know? I, I did that you know and i also had a lot to do with me uh you know english being my second language uh you know to to your point it's true like there is we have a lot of or nuestros antepasados you know the people that came before us they haven't been to these rooms right yeah. so they give us those uh, you know whatever would work for the rooms that to the rooms yeah. that were, they, they've been into but I like to say something here, man. I think I find that we, a lot of times, are afraid of entering those rooms. We have the tools. We have the abilities. We have everything that takes. Like even a restaurant, you know, like we have the money. We have the, everything that it's needed to go to that expensive restaurant. And we decide not to go because we think we're not going to fit in. I started seeing this, you know, when, since I was younger. I mean, I, again, I've been working in restaurants for, for a very long time. And I, I truly believe that to enter a new culture... You have to visit restaurants. I mean, if I want to learn more about, you know, uh, Thailand, I'm going to go eat at a, at a you know, Thai restaurant. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I mm -hmm. you know, I, I Google, you know, Thailand, but like, that's my mm -hmm. end. This, that's the way I enter that culture. You know, I sit down, I look at the menus, I learn what the language looks like, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I, I used to see the restaurants that I worked at. One of them was, you know, was kind of pricey. So people that they belonged, but they felt like they didn't, you know, the way they, they, they act, the way they moved. And I've always... I've always wondered and I've, I've pushed my friends and, and my wife and my parents and my family and anybody that I know, like, dude, like, just go. Like, restaurant is a very easy example, right? We, t we can talk about, you know, career moves and we can talk about, you know, investments and all these areas that we haven't entered fully. But it, it's, it's starting from the beginning. Like, you belong, you know? If, when you go to a restaurant, and I, I need to say this, don't think too much. Yeah, you know, manners are important, 100%, right? Like, Maybe don't lick your fingers, right? Like it's that, that's fine. But when you enter, you eat it the way you think it should be eaten, or ask the server, like, hey, how do I, how do I eat this thing? You know? Mm -hmm. And they will tell you, at the end of the day, you're paying for it, you know? Mm -hmm. And like that's for most of things, you're paying, you're just you're doing what you need to be doing. So you just fucking don't be afraid of, of going into those rooms. Um I, I'm curious, going going back to some of that feedback that you received, like. Mm -hmm. what other things were you were you conscious about besides like the words that you use like was there any other guidance on what you should do yeah you know obviously you know we we cleanly shaved i think the, the hair was the biggest thing for me uh because because you had long hair right or you still yeah have yeah long hair. yeah i've had long hair since you know five, five years now when i got married i i said you know i've been living with my parents for a long time there is that pressure right it's like i i could have let you know let my my hair grow since i was like 20 years old but i just felt like i couldn't because i was about to graduate i needed mm -hmm. to look professional i you know i needed to look clean and 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 it was it wasn't easy dude like it wasn't an easy decision and also it was the peer pressure right like it's when it started to grow it looks odd so <laughs> Yeah, and, and the in between and, phase, yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a shit show, dude. Like trying to control, <laughs> especially if you have curly hair like I do, and um, so it, that was difficult. And I told my wife, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna grow my hair, uh, and that was like the very first step. Like she supported me through that. Uh, I guess I didn't I didn't know what she was gonna say, right? Like again, we come from uh, you know, conservative in the sense like culturally conservative. You know, uh, I need to make that clear. Yeah. So uh, it was. I, yeah, I am yeah. a liberal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was scary even telling your wife. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, not necessarily scary, but I didn't want. I did want to get her input, right? Like, I mean, I've been yeah. married for two months, you know, and we're living oh. together for two months, and he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna grow my hair." She's always known me with very short hair, you know. I don't oh. want her to feel trapped. Like, hey, these motherfuckers wanted to get me, you know, tr <laughs> you know, married, and then now he's gonna let himself go, you know? No, he, he wasn't that. Um, so I started growing it and I didn't, I didn't tell anybody, you know, but it came a point where it was, it was very awkward. You know, it, it didn't look professional to what, I mean, right now, you know, you put it in a, in a bun or a ponytail easy, right? Like it looks, it looks clean. It looks nice, but it was that, uh, that uh, face where, I mean, you know, I had to go to events, you know, you're, you're wearing a full suit, but like your hair doesn't look, you know, professional, like 
quote unquote again, right? Like the, mm -hmm. the way they would want the way the way they would want you to look. What uh, did it was it like a curly afro? Like what did it look like? Yeah, it was so it, it's it's very curly. So it was it was big, and I used to wear a headband like these headphones. So yeah. my hair would be like back here because I could I couldn't grab it on a ponytail and I couldn't yeah, wear yeah. gel, you know. So like it would be big back here ah. and like just kind of clean in here. So I yeah, see yeah. like I had like big ass head, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like, dude, I look at those pictures now and I think you look pretty slick. I like it a lot, you know. It looks, uh, it sounds good. You gotta send me a picture so I could. I'll send. Oh yeah, I'll send you a picture. But I, I was very fortunate, dude, because my team, uh, uh, the, you know, the, where I was working at, they were very supportive. Like, mm. I, I've, I've might gotten comments from people outside of my team, you know, mm -hmm. in my organization. Like what? But, uh, like, like at some point, like, you know, dude, how did somebody, you know, that looks like you get a job where you, where you know, where you were? Yeah. Someone that, said know. that to you? Yeah, dude, one hundred percent. Uh. It was odd, but like I haven't had many of those experiences in my life, so I didn't know how to react. So I just punch her, you know. Like he was, I'm kidding. I did. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that no, crazy. no. Dude, hey, hey, if that sounds good, if that sounds good when you're editing, editing it, and like it's funny, keep it. If not, just fuck it. I don't want that to be used. Like, <laughs> no, no. Obviously, it was a joke. Uh, but how, but was. how did you? But how did you react though? Because. Again, like you've you've had a bunch of jobs, but now you're in this like corporate setting, right? Yeah. Where it's kind of like office job, and you're like, well, I, how do I react? Like they don't teach you how to do these things. They don't teach it, you how to deal it, with that. It's even more sensitive because uh, you know I work in a political setting, right? When, yeah. when you when you're working in corporate, like you know, th there's there's politics involved, but not not you know Democrat, Republican, yeah. you know type yeah, of yeah. politics. So. As the representative of someone yeah. that's an elected official, you know, like you, yeah. you just have to act official at all times. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I said, come again. Like, I don't understand what you mean, you know? And she's like, no, you do. And then she started, I was, you know, getting a tour of some location and I was like, okay, you know, like, and then I just hang around with another person because he was, uh, I wasn't angry. I was very surprised that that is, is you know, existed still, you know, mm -hmm. especially living in California, dude. But yeah, I mean, I, I, I kept my cool. I talked to my team. I laughed it off, you know, thinking back to it. Maybe I should have been, you know, more. I should have defended myself a little more. Uh, I, again, this has this comes from the fear of responding sometimes to to things like that. You know, it's you're afraid of re retaliation, right? Like it's uh, especially, you know, I'm, I'm a first generation you know, Mexican American or Mexican and United Statesian. I'm, 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 mm -hmm. you know, crossroads with Amer the word American, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, Mexican and from the United States. And, you know, I worked very hard to work where I'm working, you know, working for, for a person that, that I admire, you know, uh, an, an elected official and I'm navigating this area of how do I, how do I carry myself? You know, mm -hmm. what's going to represent me now? Uh, and for the first, I want to say three, four years of my career, dude, like straight up, I would sometimes like cry, like thinking, mm. uh, like this is, is this, is this really me? You know, is this really where I'm supposed to be? Especially because most of my friends, my close friends, my best friends, and and, and a lot of my family, again, they they continue to have works in construction, restaurants. Mm -hmm. You know, these 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 jobs where it's easier to be who you like for them, it's easier to be them. Uh, again, that's what I think. I'm not in their shoes, so I'm just mm -hmm. speaking of of our conversations. There is a lot more people that look like us in those in those areas mm -hmm. than 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 where I work. Right. Yeah. So when you see someone that looks like you, you just, it's easier to use react the way you usually would. Like, for example, I'll give you a quick example. So part of my job is going to, to networking events and, and, you know, representing, you know, the person that I work for in different areas. I'd really like doing that, you know, up to a point, but it's, it's, it's training. I think, you know, it, it's, it's difficult sometimes because it's, you know, meeting a lot of people and mm -hmm. Many times they don't necessarily look like you. You know, I think deep conversations are you. You you come out energized, you know. But when you when you have to do small talk, it's like fuck. How do I? You're thinking about the next question or or how you're gonna <laughs> respond like very thoroughly so yeah, that yeah. you know you, you're not look up weird. Like you know they continue to look at you the way they're supposed to. So 
well small just, talk with small talk with people that you have a lot in common with is probably much easier it's right the best but right? when 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 you're trying to like try your best to find commonality yeah like i get in my head i get very anxious and i'm like all right what's the next question i almost feel awkward if there's like a minute of silence i need to like say something yeah um, and it, it is it is very draining i'm i'm curious i'm curious too because there's this interesting dynamic of like you not just representing yourself right like you're representing and like kind of like an elected official like let's just say hypothetically speaking like someone said something bad to you and you punch them like that would look very bad not just for you but for them as well you know what right I mean? right but and also th there's this idea too of um not only your physical in real life presence there's also like your social media as well do you feel pressure to like oh i shouldn't post me drinking or something you know what i mean <laughs> right yeah i, I mean i do that, that, that's the short answer and and it's not necessarily because i've been told to worry or because you know i'm prohibited to do anything no like i i, I need to make that clear and i th i think that that rarely happens you know in, in work settings it is it's just the the expectations that i've created for myself yeah working where I work, you know, doing yeah. what I do. Mm -hmm. Like the, we put that on ourselves. Yeah, dude. Like, yeah. and I'm coming to terms with that, you know, where I was going to earlier, you know, when I was mentioning like that, it's, it's been difficult sometimes is because I think we, we, we have to learn from it, from each other, you know, and, and try to, to accommodate each other. That's, that's part of being in a community. So the type of music that I listen to, or, you know, the type of events that I like to go to, or the type of jokes that I enjoy, or, you know, these things, it was very hard to find someone to, to do that with. So that's, that's what made me kind of, kind of like sad, like is shit, like, man, like maybe I should, I should, and he's, he's not like, like my boss, for example, he's, he's first generation, you know, he looks like me. Uh, but, it, but again, it's that sometimes it's not even you being first generation. The fact that we're, you know, first, first generation, all of us, uh, doesn't mean that we're the same. I think that should, that, that should be very clear. Right. I think, you know, a lot of times we want to put all of us into this bubble. Oh yeah. First generation. That's one thing we have. Yeah, we have the same goals. We want to we want to better ourselves. We want to support each other and everyone else. But it doesn't mean that we have a lot to talk about. It's also the way that we grew up. It's also the way that you know the nature of of our works. It's it's difficult f finding that commonality. And again, why was it difficult for me? Because you know I I grew up being Mexican in Mexico. You know mm -hmm. I walked out the door and. Uh, you know, people were listening to what I was listening. My neighbors were watching what I was watching. It was, I, I think, I, I, I want to mention, like, I'm not a sticking to the past. Like, I'm definitely moving forward. And, but I, that, that's, that's what I, I struggled with, you know, years ago. Now, it's easier for me to be myself. Like, I made a very conscious decision uh, a few years ago that I'm just going to be who I am, you know. I think if I, I and not, it's not like I was pretending before because, you know, I am, I am a professional at what I do. You know, like I'm, I try to, the work that I do for the, for it to be to the best of my ability, right? Everything I do properly, but the way I was speaking, you know, I was keeping myself from making jokes. Uh, I was, uh, I wasn't mentioning things sometimes. So I wasn't speaking up because I was afraid, or oh, maybe I'm not going to pronounce it properly, or maybe it's, this is a dumb idea. Why would I, but you know what, dude, I realized that people with less experience than me you know, that have had less exposure than me, you know, that I'm not saying that, that I'm better. I'm saying that I, I you know, I feel more capable, right? Like I've, I've, I've had this fucking exposure to, you know, I, I lived in, in several countries. I, you know, I speak two languages. I, I'm an immigrant, like there is no impossible. So I just said, you know what, dude, I just fuck it. You start saying what you think, uh, making those jokes, people will adapt. And you know what? They have, man. You referenced this moment like a couple of years ago where you were just like, fuck it. Like, what was that realization that you had? I started doing stand-up comedy. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, so like I've been writing jokes for a very long time. You know, I, I, I consider myself to be a funny person, you know, to some, <laughs> to some group of people. <laughs> but um, when I started doing that, uh, you know, getting up on the stage and just, speaking up because all these jokes i've been writing jokes for fuck 10 years and they're just they were just you know catching dust you know on my notes and notebooks and the moment i went up and i started telling them and i realized that people were actually laughing and understanding maybe that was the moment but mm. i don't know i it just something click about how i should believe in myself and and trust that i'm 
I'm capable. And you know, if if my network, you know, or my friends listen to this, or, you know, my family, it would it would come as to a sh to like a, as a shock to them because I feel like I've always carried myself in a way that I feel like you know I look like I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm I'm confident. You know, I just I, I try to not show doubt. You know, like I I do these things in a specific way. But for a very long time, I struggle. Uh, you know, behind curtains, like with with uh, that idea of do do I belong? You know, mm -hmm. yeah. But it's it's an interesting visual of like because that would be people's biggest fear. Like public speaking is people's biggest fear. And even you, you spoke earlier about even like being a little bit aware of your of your accent. For example, yeah. English is not your first language. And I don't know if it was for you, but like all of that context and background, like stand up comedy would be I would be terrified. Even like the idea of what is funny in the States, like the United States is very like sarcastic, right? There are like okay. so many references even in the United States that people in Mexico wouldn't understand. There's a bunch of references in Mexico that people in the United States wouldn't understand. Like that, like my anxiety, like my heart is pumping just thinking about it, right? So <laughs> yeah, I, I could see you kind of being like, well, shit, if, if I did this and it's terrifying, then like being myself at work is like nothing. Honestly, dude, yeah, that you know that that's that's a that's a breakthrough right there. Be, because you made me think about the very first time I got up on the stage, and you know my my wife was recording, and I started very nervous. I was you know chewing my words, and you can see, dude, there's a specific moment when I hear the first laugh, mm -hmm. where you know I grab the microphone in a specific way and I start moving on stage and I start telling my jokes and I start acting them out. You, it's a very very you know specific moment where you can see where I went from nervous to fuck it. This is where I'm at right now. And this is what I should be doing. You know, it is like I, I'm, for the, the next five minutes, they're going to listen to me regardless. You know, I could be fucking screaming for five minutes, but they're going to, that's, that's what it is. That's what an open, what an open mic is. And I, I, I think you're right. You know, that did help boost, you know, my, me believing in, in what I had to say was valid. And again, it, it's it's funny, dude, because like I've, I, I'm one of those people that I like to motivate other people to do more things, you know, travel or fucking read or, you know, exercise, check out this new thing. And I was struggling, too, because I'm like, fuck, man, like there is this image that I've tried to build for myself as a person who wants to motivate other people. And sometimes I'm struggling with with who I am is like, what the fuck is going on? You know, it's uh, I, I th again, I think that has a lot to do with, with being an immigrant, man. I love that you had that moment, right? Because who knows if you didn't have that moment where you would be right now, but your, your journey isn't over. Obviously like everyone is still working on themselves. As you look forward, what's something that inspires you to continue being your most authentic self at work? We, we, we spoke about this recently uh, when we had our conversation and, and I, I, this is, this is not for me. This is from uh, Corporate Pero Latina and I'm going to give it a shout out because she said something that struck me. She said, it doesn't matter if you're a Latina or Latino in tech, or if you're a Latino or Latina in politics or, you know, anywhere where you're, where you're going into, it doesn't matter if you're only going to just going to go in and assimilate to that culture. You're not going to be who you are because if you're assimilating anywhere where you're at, you're only a statistic, right? You are only a Latino or a Latina in tech. So that that is what motivates me, you know, it, that knowing that I can just by 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 doing what I do and being who I am, I can someone is going to see me and they're going to be like, oh, shit, you know what? I should do the same thing. You know, I'm tired of having this mask over my face and just pretending that I like what I've been like, not, not what I'm doing, but like the way I'm acting or, you know, having to study a show the day before just so that you can fit in you know so i don't know if this happens to you have you ever been in a place where you're speaking spanish you know with someone and then someone comes in that doesn't speak spanish and you start speaking in english because you don't want them to be left out or like or you don't want them to feel like you're speaking shit about them or or so you don't want them to to judge you right like that happens to 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 me and my wife all the time like and we consciously we we said we're speaking in spanish it's a fucking language you know we don't have to start speaking english just because someone else just came to the conversation if that part of our conversation yes less everybody should be included but if i'm standing waiting for the bus speaking in spanish and then this random person comes in why do i have to feel shitty about that this is my language too so yeah change those little changes man
Mi gente, that wraps up this week's episode of the Quinto Eres podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please do us a favor, leave us a rating and a review. It just helps us in the algorithm to ensure that these stories get heard by as many people as possible. Scaling these stories and experiences is the only way that we're going to redefine professionalism. Thank you. We'll see you next week.